Welcome back to another edition of the Players Lounge. And we got former UGA great, now Arizona Card Cardinal, John Letterbetter joining us right now to chat up about what happened. Conference Championship Weekend. We're going to look a little bit ahead to the Super Bowl. We're going to talk UJ football, of course. What's going down with the dogs as they get ready to get to defending a back-to-back -back national champs, going for a three-peat. But first off, man, John, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for taking some time. Man, appreciate you, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Uh, glad to be on the show. And um, got to say this first, go dogs, man, always. <laughs> Amen to that. All right, before we get into UJ, uh, obviously the big game, and we did have some dogs last night uh, playing in some of those yeah. games in the NFC and AFC championship games, especially the Eagles with Nicobe and Jordan. Um, just your initial reactions to both games. Obviously, one of them was a complete ass whooping, and the second one was uh, down to the very wire with the last second field goal. Uh, what were your thoughts? Man, uh, crazy day of football. That's all I could say, seriously. Um, you know, watching the first game, I thought, you know, the Eagles – and the 49ers were going to be uh, kind of a closer game, uh, you know, knowing the Eagles haven't uh, played the Eagles and the 49ers. Um, I just thought it was going to be a closer game. Both defenses are very dominant. Um, but, you know, we saw that it was very different. Uh, surprised me. There's a few scuffles in there. I saw Nicobe get into a little scuffle, too, trying to protect Quan, And then Sue got in there. So, you know, it was definitely some real football being played, definitely playoff football. Um, as, as for the other game, man, uh, I know some people are upset right now. It was a little bit uh, controversial towards the last, um, you know, drive, you know, that last late hit. But honestly, I love games like that, man. You know, where they're close, they're nail biters. You, know, you see who, you know, wants the game more. And um, I, I feel like this is the perfect, you know, stage uh, for the Super Bowl, you know, the Eagles and the Chiefs. Okay. I'm with you. All right, so you're a defensive guy. And – I'm telling you, man, it's been a really weird year for defenders and quarterbacks. Like, I don't know, like some of the heads, I'm a quarterback and I'm not a big quarterback. I'm just like, that's stupid. Like I used to get the crap knocked out of me and take Facts. it in the chin. <laughs> and now these dudes really just get tapped and it's a, but, but last night was a little bit different. Like that was, that was a little bit, you know, you know, a little bit after the play, he's getting towards the sideline. How do you balance that? And what were your, what, what do you do? I want to put you in that situation. What do you do in that situation? When the quarterback's running out of bounds, you know they're trying to Man. get a field goal range to win the game. I'll say this. Um, you know, those situations are tough. Uh, you know, the game's on the line. You know it's on the line as a player. And, you know, every player wants to win. So, you know, you're going to do whatever it takes to put your team in the best position to be successful. And, you know, sometimes, you know, plays like that happen. You know, after the review, you know, everyone was a little upset because it was late. Um, and it took them a while to review the play. You know, they had, it was so loud in the stadium, they had to, you know, go to the person outside of the stadium to kind of view it. But, man, I think it was a good call, honestly. Um, some of the other calls that happened this year are more questionable. Um, it, as a defender, it's very hard. You know, it's hard to hit the quarterback the proper way, but I will say that's part of being a pro. And um, as the game changes and moves along, uh, you've got to adjust. And I'm not saying, you know, that in a, you know, happy manner <laughs> because obviously, you know, everyone wants to play, you know, clean football and take care of each other, but, you know, you've got to protect every person. And, and I'm a firm believer in that, but it is hard to get set, to hit the quarterback when you're kind of playing timid. I mean, do you, what drills do you work on, I guess, in practice all week? Because it's hard. Like you dudes are, you're huge. You're 300 plus pounds. You're coming down to the quarterback and feels like, oh, they should be able to hold up. Like you, <laughs> And that split of a second is why I hate, you know, I would hate playing defense to be able to hold up as you're going 100 miles per hour trying to get to the quarterback. Yeah. What, is, what is that initial moment before contact? Are there like money signs in your head, like, oh, damn, I don't want to get fined? Yeah, I'll say this. How do you hold every yourself up? Every defender knows. Once, once you see the quarterback, every defender knows your eyes get kind of wide. You know, you see it and you're like, okay, well, like, let me get this set. And, you know, as you're going to get it, you're like, okay, well, I got to make sure I'm at the upfield shoulder. I got to make sure this guy doesn't get out of the pocket. And now, you know, you have that other element of, okay, now I have to make sure I don't put my weight on this guy, even though I'm running full speed to get this guy on the ground. So it's, it's hard. Um, we've done some drills in practice. Um, you know, our D-line coach is, you know, pretty fluid and functional when it comes to, uh, you know, drills and just coaching. So we've done some stuff with pop-ups, you know, um, where you have like the big pad, the, the big smash pad where we've, you know, literally jumped out, lunged to hit the quarterback, and then you roll off and, you know, you just – pull your arms off, pull your body off. But, you know, I actually saw, I think it was, I want to say Detroit, I believe. 
I can't remember who, who was rushing, but, you know, like the guy literally hit the quarterback and thought, you know, it was a sack because, you know, he was like, well, I hit the quarterback. He's going down a little bit, but the, the quarterback didn't go all the way down. So he kept extending the play and it ended up being, you know, a big game. So it's crazy to me sometimes, you know, you see some plays and you're like, how did that happen? Like, how was that not a sack? Like, how did he not get down on the ground? But it's part of the game. But it is getting harder. It's getting harder. It's getting it's getting rough for, for uh, pass rushers and, you know, interior D linemen. But you got to make it work. <laughs> All right. This game right now, the Super Bowl heading up, two teams that you've played. It's, it's the Eagles. It's the Chiefs. You've seen them. You've seen both these quarterbacks. They're both uh, Houdini-esque in the pocket moving around. We talk about, like, you know, how careful defenders have to play. Give us a breakdown of the quarterbacks, the offenses, and, and why you like one over the other, baby. Man, um, I'll be honest. I like both quarterbacks for uh, what they're able to do and what they're able to create on the football field for their teams. Um, my favorite would be the Eagles. Um, I just think that, you know, Jalen Hurts has played a complete game this season, um, you know, using his legs, using his arms, and, you know, just being that factor for the Eagles. You know, without him, you know, you saw when he wasn't playing, when he was hurt. Um, they lost some games, and when he's on the field, they win. <laughs> so um, uh, I think that they're definitely my leader for the Super Bowl. It's going to be a good game. Um, you know, the Chiefs, I think they have the number, like the high score offense, like, you know, rate per game. So um, it's definitely going to be a game where they've got to take over, but they both have defenses. So, you know, really good defenses. So, you know, if the defenses can stop, you know, the quarterbacks keep them contained, like we said, keep them in the pocket, whoever does that. I believe is going to win the game. Okay, speaking of mobile quarterbacks, you guys have one in Arizona. Before yeah. we get into him a little bit with on the field, uh, how much money is he raking up in the video game aspect? Have you played him before? How good is he on the sticks? Man, I haven't. You want to know what the craziest thing is? Like, if you talk to him for real, like, he'll play Madden. Uh, he'll play Call of Duty, like, every now and again, but he's really, like, a Madden player, like, Everyone's like, oh, Kyle Murray's on Call of Duty. Can't wait till the new Call of Duty comes out. But, I mean, he he, he prefers Madden, if you ask him. Um, he's played, like, uh, Call of Duty with the face people a few times um, in the offseason. So, I think once everybody figured that out, it was just like, you know how social media is. Once one thing comes out, everybody's like, oh, yeah, this, this. And it just starts to fuel it. But, man, I haven't played with him personally. Um, I'm more of a Call of Duty guy <laughs> myself. I don't play Madden. Um, I feel like, you know, I do enough football on the field. <laughs> so I'm a 2K and Call of Duty, Fortnite kind of guy. All right. Well, I, he's he's little. And I, I don't want to get into that talk about just how small he is, but I want to do it in the sense of the the quarterbacks coming out this year, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. The one knock on Bryce is he's like 5'10", 5'11". But like you go up against a quarterback that's what? He's probably 5'10", 5, 5'11". 5, he's a little bit thicker, though. Yeah. Like. Do you ever see any struggle from him with his size for like Alabama fans who are trying to say that like Bryce should be the number one pick in the draft? Do you think it really matters that much? I think that you have to have a different type of game. Um, I think that you have a, a extra dynamic and uh, extra, I guess you have to show people that, you know, you have a one up and, you know, smaller guys always get that rep, but he's fast. Uh, he's quick. He does, you know, what he does well. Um, um, and, you know, there's other aspects of the game that he wants to improve on that you see him working at. Um, which I commend him on, you know, but you know, what he has, his skill set, he's learned to develop it and mold it and become an elite quarterback. You know, not many people can have that size, that, you know, measurables and uh, come out there and play football like that against guys my size, guys bigger than me, um, you know, guys faster than me. You know, it's just, it's, it's not easy. So to be able to come out there on that football field week in and week out and make things happen, you know, put up crazy numbers, um, it's not a mistake. <laughs> Not a mistake at all. all right, he's 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 freaky. He's freaky like that. Uh, the, the speaking of yeah, Cardinals just have so much entertainment off the field. I mean, you guys are like a <laughs> it was a crazy uh, year. So opera esque. It was a crazy year for you guys. Uh, what, what was your reaction? Uh, I don't know if you see it or not, but when when Cliff had that uh, the, the article started flowing out about your former coach uh, buying a one way ticket to Thailand. And essentially saying, all right, man, I'll take my big stacks of money and go enjoy vacation for a while. I mean, like, what else are you supposed to do? You know, you get, or, or do you get fired and get paid and then just kind of stay at home and sulk? You know what I mean? I, I would take a vacation too, um, you know, just to reset and relax your mind. So, you know, power to him. You know, he, I, I understand, you know, he was getting a lot of scrutiny and, you know, even the things that were going on, you know, what TV depicted, you know, for the Cardinals and our hard knocks and HBO was, 
looked like a lot of strife and there was a lot of things going on within the organization, but you know, that happens with any team, you know, you've got to work through those bumps and bruises and, you know, wherever the cards may fall, you know, you got to play the hand. So uh, that's, I'm a firm believer in that, but I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at him at all. I commend him, you know, take your vacation, man. And oh, enjoy yeah. your time, enjoy your time off and enjoy that money. You know, Cause anybody else would do it. It's not bad an eye. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, that's the best job in the world is going to get paid. Yeah. Get, NFL or college coach, make your money, get fired, and then you're just set for life. So I, I'm with money. you. I, I ain't mad about it for that. You're going to get it no matter what. So <laughs> you're just going to get to that level. What, yeah. what, how much swag did he have just like day to day? Because you, like, you look at from the outside in, like, damn, that oh, dude's like, man, he's smooth. Shades, just cool little Lulu t shirt, something like that, mm -hmm. man. A hat. Um, players coach for sure, man. Players coach, um, I, I love them, man. He talks to the guys, man. He just encourages you. And um, the thing is, you know, with coaches like that, you got to take responsibility and, you know, put it on the team. And, you know, you got to have the leaders in, in the locker room to make sure that things are still getting done because, you know, coaches like that put it on you. They, they put it on the players. And um, he told us that in the beginning. Um, and I, I enjoyed him. Um, I loved him, you know, when I was there. You know, I was only there for – this is going on my third year, but I came from Miami. Um, the transition, he made it very smooth. Um, for me, I'm grateful for him and the whole organization. You go from Athens, Georgia, to Miami, to Scottsdale, Arizona, which are three beautiful places with oh, lots of beautiful yeah. scenery in multiple ways. Uh, but what's your favorite so far? I mean, Miami and Scottsdale are a little similar-ish, maybe sort of. Uh, Athens is you know, the greatest college town of all time. What, what's your favorite uh, cup of tea? Man, you know, I'm going to go with the 305, man. I love Miami, man. I just love the city. Uh, I love the water. Um, you know, going down there, leaving Athens, going straight to Miami is not bad at all. You know, some of my other college teammates, you know, going to cold cities like Buffalo and, you know, Detroit and freezing. Uh, you know, I got to go somewhere tropical and, you know, experience, you know, the beginning of my NFL career. And I was grateful for that. I, I, I love Miami, though. You know, even being undrafted, going down there, just – you know, being in a place like that, you know, I have a military background. So like, I've only been, uh, I've been a bunch of places, but you know, we've been like on base. I've lived on base a bunch of my life. So, you know, being there and, you know, walking outside, you know, taking a 10 minute ride down to the beach, you know, just seeing that vast water and the crazy sunsets there and just the great food and the culture. Um, I fell in love with it right away, but I can't complain because uh, Scottsdale is also, you know, like you said, it's pretty similar. Um, we don't have as much, you know, water. We got some lakes out there, but it, the vibe is pretty, pretty, pretty much the same. Crazy sunsets, a lot of scenery, more nature, more hype type stuff. But I mean, I, I enjoy it, man. I'm, I'm blessed. I could be in a colder place. I've been in some pretty warm places, mm -hmm. so I, I, I love it. <laughs> I, that, that reminds me, like, I got drafted by Kansas City, and I'm like, I'm like, first of all, what the hell is Kansas City? Never been there. No, I was like, I'm just thinking like fields and cows and that's it and i was pleasantly surprised i actually enjoyed kansas city but now i'm a southern boy it would be nice to go to like miami or some you know tampa uh, totally. something like that to get some sunshine like those 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 falls and winters up in kansas city a little bit uh dreary uh, I, i'm not gonna i can't let i can't let you go without talking about a little bit of little little dog action uh what makes kirby so good at the end of the day is it the pregame speeches is it the day-to-day -day? What makes him essentially like the, the the next Nick Saban, if not better? Hey, listen, I'm the biggest Kirby advocate. Um, I have the most bias. I love that man to death. Um, the stuff he did for me um, just is unrivaled. Um, you know, he's a people people person. But uh, you know, most coaches say they care about the players, say they care, um, but he goes above and beyond, um, whether it's on the field or off the field. And you know, he exudes his passion you know, just in a way that makes you like, hell yeah, I'm going to play football for this man. <laughs> and uh, that's that's hard to do. You know, successful coaches have that. And, um, you know, I think as a player, you see it and you respect it. And um, he has it. He has it. You know, he finds a way to get the most out of his players. And he knows how to coach his players differently when they have different types of skill sets, different type of attitudes, personalities. And I feel like that's the biggest factor that, you know, separates coaches, you know, whether your, your ability to do that. He's, he, he's also, I just, you know, I just, 
I just right. love the pregame speeches. Like, I was just about to say he's he, also a nut, so you can't leave that out, man. But, you know, like I said, it's his passion, you know, and he makes you more passionate about the game. You know, I listened to that pregame speech. I was like, yep, that's the Kirby I know. <laughs> you know, that's the Kirby I know. <laughs> oh, he, he makes me in my old age want to put some pads on and go run to a damn wall when I hear I this pregame speech. I thought he was going to put some pads on and go play in the game. I was like, man, Kirby, let me find out, you know, put that 16 back I would on. love to see Kirby put some pads. All right, so let, let's just think, like, coaches out there in the SEC, and I know, like, you are you may not know more, it shifts like crazy, but, like, would you take Kirby yeah. in a one-on-one -on -one Oklahoma drill against 99% of the coaches out there? I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him. You should see him at practice. I, I, I'm, he tries to practice. He wish he could practice. <laughs> I'm is taking he going low or is he going high? Is he going is he going for the legs or you think he's going for the Oh, he's going low, man. You know he was a DB, man. He's not attacking the high. He's going straight for them legs. He's taking you out. <laughs> oh, I love that. All right, man. Well, I know you got to get the rehab. We appreciate you jumping on. I would love to get you on more. You're freaking awesome. Uh, y'all make sure you go follow John and, and all of his socials. And thanks for jumping on with us at the players lounge and uh go dogs. Go dogs, man. Thanks for having me again, Aaron. And I'll uh, see you next time.